Hello and welcome back to the Fractured Rooster Garage. My name is Josh and today we continue working on the Bronco interior. The Bronco is outside because I needed the shop to paint everything. And as you can see, it, it's, everything's painted. In the background you see all, most of the interior panels. Uh, here's what's left. Here's the original color of, I don't know what color that is, tan. And we, we painted it a, what is this, a medium beige. An HVP113 from Duplicolor. Uh, we, we pulled it all out and we scrubbed it all down with some, some degreaser, some citrus solve, and then we wiped it with acetone to uh, open up the pores of the plastic and get all the, all the hand oils and greases out of it. After the acetone bath, we gave it a quick shot of uh, some adhesion promoter from Duplicolor also. Uh, the can says within three minutes to spray a color coat. So we followed that up with our, uh, our medium beige. Uh, and just dusted it on. You want to put on many light feather coats. Don't, don't go heavy with this stuff or it will peel right off. Um, you want it to kind of dry and, and evaporate and shrink and then you can put another coat over the top of that. It takes about 20 to 30 minutes between coats is what I was waiting. Uh, as soon as it's kind of dry to the touch, you're ready for another coat. Uh, but each, each of the interior pieces got uh, at least three coats, at least three feather coats. These rear interior panels were pretty sun faded and pretty thirsty, honestly. They might have four to five coats on them because it just kept pulling, pulling that paint inside the plastic, uh, which is good because that means it will stick very, very well. The seats have yet to go get cleaned up, but they're here. Uh, they need some extraction and probably a drill with a bristle brush and some cleaner and then a, a good wash down, maybe a, a extraction. And I think those will be good to go because the foam's very good. The foam's in very good condition, and I think uh, the seat covers will come back to. I think they'll come back to 80% new or so. So today, I think we're going to finish up this interior resto. I picked up some paint pens. I have a chrome, a fluorescent orange, and a black. And my thought on those is uh, originally this truck had a chrome strip on, these, on the dash uh, that separated the upper and the lower dash panels. Uh, kind of match that. So I bought a chrome pin and hopefully that lays down a decent enough chrome that uh, we can leave it alone. If not, I bought the black so that we can lay it over the top of that chrome. Uh, and if that looks terrible, then we'll just hit it with some more medium beige and get rid of all of our changes. And the orange, I've seen this done before and I've always wanted to do it. And I, this truck is the perfect candidate for it as well as the Ranger. The Ranger is actually worse than this one. Uh, but the gauge needles, they just fade over time. You can see the temp gauge there. The bottom half of it is white, and even the left half of that amp gauge is white. And it's kind of hard to see. I don't know. I think it would bring some, uh, some life back to these gauges, because after we add these interior panels and the new headliner and carpet, uh, things like that are going to jump out and look terrible. So. Getting ahead of it, we've got some of this orange paint. As you can see, the gauge face just comes off with like three screws. That'll come off. That'll allow us to get in there with a, and very lightly just wipe out any dust, clean the back of the lens, clean the front of the lens, maybe hit up some plastic polish, and then use our paint pen and just paint those gauge needles back to orange. And that gauge cluster should look practically good as new. So we'll do that real quick this morning for a quick easy win uh so let's set up a little workbench here i'm trying to be cool here i've got an avalanche behind me i put too much weight on this cardboard box and it's collapsing on me. <laughs> the gauge cluster was just too much i don't want to drop it that'll work uh-oh i'm gonna have to put the camera down and solve this well it's a good thing it's an action camera right all right, let's get our workbench set up here. A piece of cardboard will work. <clears throat> oh, it's a piece of cardboard. What is this piece of cardboard? Uh, this is some interior, well, it's uh, some jute padding to go underneath the carpet. There it is, 36 by 72 padding. Uh, yesterday, I had some time to drive up to Kansas City, so I hopped in the Prius and did so. Picked up padding for under the jute carpet, uh, some foil backed reflective jute padding also. I don't know if that's gonna go on the floor or in the ceiling. I picked up a front quarter panel for the Bronco. 
sorry, a front fender for the Bronco and a rear quarter panel. It's got the tail light housing, all the bottom to top. It's even got part of the window frame in place, as well as a patch panel for the other side. Uh, I don't know what this is, speedometer cable. That one's getting a little wonky. Window, all of the window weather stripping and the back hatch weather stripping. So that's kind of just the tip of the iceberg. But after all this is done, we'll be ready for paint. Yeah, I said it, paint. We're going to paint the Bronco. Back to the original white and, and uh, what was that? A walnut metallic, I believe. Um, yeah. So I guess we're going all in on the Bronco. <laughs> so... Uh, like I said in the last video, man, I really like that truck. It's really fun to drive. It gets lots of looks. That Bronco probably gets more attention than my Fox Body Mustang that's got everything done to it. It gets more attention than a Corvette. I have yet to stop at a gas station or get out of it at a grocery store or at Lowe's or something and have someone not walk up to me and say, man, what year is that? My dad used to have one or I rode to school every morning on one of these or my first car was one of these. I learned to drive stick in one of these. Man, people just connect with that Bronco. It's really cool. It's a good feeling to drive. I get lots of thumbs up and just stares at, at stoplights. So uh, surprisingly, it's been a really, really fun car to work on, really easy car to work on, and it gets lots of positive attention, and people just love that thing. It's hard to hate the Bronco, man. So yeah, so we're going to make it right. We're going to give it a, a second chance at life. And uh, yeah, here's, here's step probably two. Step one was getting it running and driving and the EFI upgrade. Uh, two is going to be all this interior work, maybe three, we're going to tackle some suspension upgrades and just, again, res renovations. It's got, a t it's got enough miles on it. It's old enough that lots of the bushings and stuff are wore out, and I've already got all that stuff on the cabinets to do. Uh, and then I think we're going to paint the thing. I think we're really going to do it. I've never painted a car, and it's, we'll just hang some plastic in here. We're not going to take it to a booth or anything. Well, I think we'll just hang plastic in here and shoot it. Why not? Fractured rooster style. Uh, yeah, if you haven't picked up on it, that's kind of the theme of this channel is stuff that you can honestly do at home with the tools you can buy at your local auto parts store uh, on, a, on a realistic budget that a guy, a blue collar guy like myself, can afford. So no crazy tools, no big shops, no outsourcing, well, very little outsourcing of stuff. Uh, just a realistic car guy channel. Enough talking, let's get after it. Let's start with this gauge cluster, and then we'll move on to, I don't know, I called my body guy. He might come over today. If so, we're going to mock up these panels, uh, just put them up against what's already there, draw some lines around, and start cutting some panels off of the thing. We'll pull it in here to do it because it's going to be a hot one today. But I'm afraid to put the majority of this interior in if I'm going to be cutting and making sparks and grinding on the inside of the quarter panels. And yeah, I don't want to make a mess of all this or have to pull any of it back out because that's when it's going to get scratched and damaged. Not really sure where we're going to end up on today's video, but let's get started on this gauge cluster. All right, step one is going to be pulling these covers off. Okay. As you can see, the dust that's come in around that, that hole for the trip reset. All that dust we're going to try and wipe out of there. There's a little bit down here as well. Uh, so I'm going to go get a microfiber and just kind of dust the majority of this out. I'm not going to use any cleaning agent because I don't want to pull any of this dye this paint is likely oxidized or faded at some point. I'm afraid if I get any liquid in there, it's going to move that around and make that background kind of smoky or gray color. So I'm not going to try to clean any of this. I'm just dusting. And you got to be careful for your rag not to grab the edge of one of these needles and pull it off or, or reset its orientation. That's one thing we're going to be careful about while we're painting. And I'm thinking I might, well, I suppose I could just do a before and after pick, but in some cases, <clears throat> like my amp gauge here, it's pointed right in the middle. Uh, if you had a car that, that had some gauges that were positioned, maybe they were stepper motors instead of these little servos or whatever these are, uh, you might want to throw some tape down in the background and put a mark on there so you would, so you would know where to, uh, where to put that needle back too if you were to, to bump its orientation off. Oh, look at that. The cover lifts off, making this easier. Like that. Just want to get all the dust out of here. This will make a huge difference. And this would be something that would stand out hugely 
after we do all this other work and if we wouldn't have touched this this would have been one of those first things you notice every time you get in and wish you'd have done while you were there it's all these little details that add up to make a restoration one believable and two like full circle you don't want to bend these so i'm trying to be very careful i'm getting a little aggressive uh, i don't want to bend any of these needles okay let's get our orange paint and they make specific paint for this but i just picked up a forney this is like uh, something you would use to write on some implements or something uh, just an extra large orange paint marker it's what i could find on amazon that would be here in a reasonable amount of time when i was at lmc truck they had some a bottle of uh, specific paint for gauges and i almost bought it but i'd already had this coming so i thought i'd give this a shot they were about the same price about nine bucks or so for a paint pen all right now we're making a mess Okay, it doesn't look like this is quite as fluorescent as I wanted it to be or thought it might be, but it's orange and that will work. So I'm starting at the base and just dragging it out to the tip. Oh my God. Disaster. Dang it. All right, now we're in emergency mode. I'll wipe this before it dries. Too late. All right, to the acetone. All right, in hindsight, maybe this paint pen was a bad idea. Maybe I should have gotten the bottle of paint that LMC truck sold. All right, well, we didn't go across any of the lettering for the gauge, so I think we're okay. But as you can see, I wiped off quite a bit of black background paint. That's why I was nervous to wipe any of this with any type of cleaner. God dang, this thing's oozing everywhere. Okay, well, we're going to do it upside down then to prevent any drips. And there we go. It's not as fluorescent as I kind of wanted it to be, but at least they're uniform color. They're not half white and half orange. I know these needles lift off, but I'm nervous to, I'm nervous to pull them off and paint them separately. Okay. I had to throw a little tape on the speedometer side here. Cool. Well, that was easy. Minus the paint dripping everywhere because I may have shaken it a little aggressively and was holding it at an angle or I don't know what caused all that, but I think we're good to go now. Now let's turn our attention to these lenses. As you can see, they're kind of foggy and they've got some scratching in them. So I'll grab some plastic polish real quick and scrub those down. I like to use a Meguiar's Plast-X. First we'll hit them with some alcohol. just to clean them up a little bit. Yeah. I'm gonna focus on the front side of these and not necessarily the inside because nothing should have ever touched the inside of this, so. Yeah, made a fair difference. Wouldn't you say? Cool. I kind of wish they'd have done a before shot, but there's an after. You can see it's not 
it's not perfect, but the plastic's now clear and the gauge, the gauge needles are at least a uniform color. So that was a quick 10 minute fix. Let's move on to something else. So I mentioned I got the chrome to do that. The dash trim, well, I've also noticed that these HVAC vents have uh, a chrome trim around them also. I'd like for all of it to match. Not that this stuff is terrible, but this is the chrome I've got and I kind of want that to match. And also, as I was looking at those, I realized they're pretty dirty. And if I'm gonna put this truck back together, that clean, I may as well get in here, clean some of this junk out, so. Just grabbing my little plastic brush, getting in here. Oh yeah, yeah, get in there. Just trying to dislodge a bunch of it while it's dry and then I'll hit it with some alcohol or something next and try to scrub this out. May soak these in the sink for a little bit. alcohol well wow. almost as good as new cool well we'll continue on this all right so those are I'm gonna say clean enough so here's our liquid chrome never used it before in my life made in Germany so you know it's a good product it's a four millimeter pump marker www.molotow.com Moloto, Moloto. Uh, same type of paint as the orange. Shake it, mix it well. And depress the tip and it should flow. So this one is significantly more expensive than the others, so the expectations are a little higher here. So I bought the four mil thinking it would be the perfect width to, to do all of these pieces. Man, this stuff's laying down really nice. I've never used this product before, but I will certainly be using it again. Dang. Germany does not fail. Look at that. Compared to, I would say that looks factory. I'm kind of an oddball guy. I like to work on weird things like my Falcon and my Broncos and my Ford Rangers. And that's cool, but that also means that sometimes you just can't get parts because they're not as high a demand as, you know, Camaro or Mustang parts. So you're stuck doing things like this just to make it work because you can't buy replacements. Luckily there's companies like LMC and Moss Motors that jump in and fill a void, but you know, some of those parts are expensive. You got to pay for the R&D and the shipping. And sometimes a simple fix like this is the best route. Speaking of, LMC Truck, if you're watching, you should probably contact these guys. Because that worked great. And to prove it, let's hit this XLT badge here real quick. Best case here is to stick it into some cardboard. And there you go. You know, they remake these badges and they're about 30 bucks or for $10, you can just restore your old ones. Uh, we'll move this out of the way and let it set up, but I'm definitely calling that a win. That's very, very good. I'll get these other plastics off camera and uh, I think this stuff is ready to go back in the Bronco. Unfortunately, I need to mock up those panels first and maybe even cut off the quarter panel before I put any of this stuff back in there because I'm afraid I'm about to pull some of it back out. I don't want to damage or scratch any of it. So let me shuffle all this stuff around and get that Bronco in here and we'll start mocking up for that quarter panel. Well, the Bronco is back in the shop and I'm kind of running out of room here, as you can see. So I think my best course of action now is to get at least some of this interior back in the Bronco, at least the dash. Uh, a quick update there is I taped off the majority of the dash and painted the lower half, basically the bottom third. 
had to paint the side of the dash, the steering column collar, and steering wheel itself. And this is a, a fairly rubber steering wheel. I'm hoping that this vinyl paint sticks well, but I'm not really crossing my fingers. I'm not holding my breath on that, I should say. Hey, look at that, the dash is back in. It looks great. All the paint blends and matches very well, considering it's smooth metal to textured plastic. Uh, the color doesn't mismatch too bad. And there's gonna be a little bit just because the reflection of light, but after all, I think that's all color is, is just the way your eyeball sees reflections. I don't know, nerdy stuff. Anyway, this looks great actually. Put the center cap back on the wheel, took the tape off of the buttons for the cruise control. And I was about to put the overhead map light console thing together. And uh, it's got this cool built-in clock. Uh, I was going to put that back in and I got to thinking that is about the same size as the three and a half inch Holly touchscreen. So I grabbed it. Look how perfectly that fits. Like it was made for it. So I think it's safe to say we found a location to mount our Holly touchscreen uh, right overhead. That's perfect. So I've got to somehow mount this in here and there's not really a mounting solution the only thing i could come up with that would be both semi-permanent i don't know it would be a strap from here to here but then i'm afraid it's going to vibrate around and move around so i think what i'm going to do double-sided tape i don't think is going to work i think what i'm going to do is Glue it in place. Don't freak out. Not permanent glue. Arts and craft glue. A little hot glue in here. Just on the corners so that I could pull this thing out if I ever needed to. There's the finished product. The glue is still cooling actually. Look at that. That is super cool. I guess that solves that problem. I didn't know where I was gonna mount it, honestly. I had it between the gauges and I never really liked it. I wanted to put it in, this, in the ashtray and make a little flip up mechanism, which I was kind of still working on, but I was worried that as it flipped up enough times, eventually it was gonna break the wires leading to it. So I was trying to figure out something better. I guess that's it. It's not gonna get any better than that. And hopefully, we'll get this map light going again. This is absolutely my favorite feature of the Bronco. And this, these interior panels go in much slower than they come out. It's taken me about an hour to get all the window trim in, the A-pillar, the overhead, the dash put back together with a new gauge cluster in there. There we go. Now you can see the uh, gauge cluster with the new painted needles. I think from the doors forward, it's pretty well done. Need to put the visors in, obviously. Uh, but I was up here working and realized I didn't give you an update on the floor. What I ended up doing there was pounding all the metal flat and just running a bunch of tack welds along there. But yeah, just a quick update. The interior is coming along. It's coming along a lot slower than I anticipated because putting stuff back together, you've got it's kind of tedious. You've got to be careful not to scratch anything or crack anything, not to over torque any of the bolts. Coming out, of course, you just grab your drill driver and just zip, 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 throw bolts in a bucket and throw everything in a pile and it's done. But that's yeah, looking a lot better. The color's a lot more uniform than I thought it was gonna come out. So I'm happy with that. The headliner I thought was gonna be a little bit too orange, but it's actually blending quite well. So I think maybe the dash helped, that fake burl walnut look. Maybe brings, ties some of the orange together. I don't know. I think with the seats in here though it's you're not even going to notice that headliners that that far off so i think i'm at the point where i'm going to move a bunch of this junk into the cab like i talked about and then set up the quarter panel here and uh start start test fitting panels well i think that's going to do it for today i like to keep these videos under 30 minutes so we're going to cut the video here i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something I hope you had fun and we'll see you on the next video when uh well, when we cut the quarter panels off this truck, something I've never done before. So we'll see you then.